Hello, welcome everyone to another capsule on IA and international relations for the Shankar IAS Academy. We have had a gap for a few days for various reasons. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, today we are planning to think, talk about a very unfortunate incident in Qatar, which uh, led to the sentence of five, eight Indian nationals for uh, espionage charges. Uh, this is rather exceptional because the uh, Indian community generally in the Gulf is very peaceful and very uh, big, disciplined. And in many ways, they are preferred to many other nationalities because of that uh, sincerity and devotion of work of our people. And uh, we have very good relations with Qatar. And Qatar, though it's a small country, it's a very important country. It is probably one of the richest countries in the world per capita. And also it has the very large reserves of gas and petrol. And also they have a very good uh, open uh, relationship with the rest of the world. Sometimes, of course, they are suspected of uh, supporting uh, some elements uh, which are, uh, you know, uh, shall we say, extremists in certain respects. And therefore, there have been problems at one time last year or year before last, um, UAE and uh, uh, Bahrain, I think some, some things, some countries, Qatar relations with Qatar. That's very strange because they are all members of the GCC. And uh, there was some difference of opinion between them, but it was very quickly resolved. And they all took it very easy. And even though it was a serious act on the part of cutting off a GCC member, it was soon resolved. And uh, even during the uh, kind of boycott of Qatar, gas kept flowing into the other countries and they had good relationship and uh, so on. So it was, uh, they still continue to be a very strong partner of the GCC in spite of that problem. Uh, but the timing is somewhat strange at this time because the whole of West Asia is in turbulence. And at that time, this to happen to eight Indians is very unfortunate. Um, it's not only that they are Indian nationals, they are also former naval officers, seven of them commissioned officers and one non-commissioned officer. Uh, they were actually working for an Oman company, which had deployed them in Qatar, because uh, uh, Qatar was uh, purchasing some submarines, major submarines, as they are called, from Italy. And the, uh, the responsibility of these uh, eight Indians uh, was to induct these uh, submarines into the Qatar Navy. And naturally, these people had experience in India. And they were selected for that, though they were not, they are not in the service now. They were all in the service and uh, later either retired or took premature retirement and joined this company. So they are very trusted and able and efficient people. So, but one does not know what happened. Last year, they were all arrested and uh, charged with espionage with, uh, for another country. And that another country is supposedly Israel. And so at this time, when the West Asia is in is on fire, as it were. This is very sensitive. That's also the reason why India is concerned about it at this time, whether it should lead to any other. But our priority, of course, first and foremost, is to uh, get this uh, death sentence removed because they, they have already said they are not guilty and uh, it has to be proved in court. Uh, but after a year of trials, it's a trial, lower court uh, sentenced them to death, which came as a it's a big shock to everyone. And uh, they are, of course, uh, said that they are innocent of it. So several ways in which we want to deal with it. As far as Government of India is concerned, our highest priority is to get them back. Not only, uh, you know, remove the death sentence, but also not keep them in jail, but let them come and join their families. This is India's highest priority. But then there are other complications here. First of all, the legal issue. Legally, the, they are entitled to go to a higher court, a court of appeal, and uh, it can go sub several levels. And finally, it may reach the Emir himself, who will have to take a decision. So that is the process. And this may take some time. 
and uh, very often apparently this pardon is given by the emir uh, during the eid period so the next eid period will come only after six months or so so at least for six months they will be in jail and at that time they are free to make a representation or or file an appeal in a higher court and uh, as far as i understand government of india is helping them in the mc supporting them to file this uh, case at the high courts and that is the first step for most important step but nobody can say what the outcome of that will be and where it will go to even higher positions and finally go to the emir we do not know so there are sorts of lots of uncertainty which of course is concern particularly the families and also for the government of india itself itself uh, so this is a bad situation uh, particularly at this time when everybody is very concerned about uh, war between israel and hamas india itself has taken a, we have always been supportive of palestine and uh, but india has not uh, uh, you know approved the ter terrorist attack that hamas staged and therefore india was critical of the of hamas but of course we continue to support palestinians and the palestinian state so there is no difficulty there but uh, since this is a sensitive time uh, it would be of uh, great interest of the people the united states is fully supportive of uh, israel they are not even willing to call for a ceasefire and all these problems are going on and then we have to handle this sensitive situation in qatar um one one thing that uh, uh, we can do is to support them to take it up in the high court uh, but there are other ways also the other way is to ask them to uh, seek pardon from the head of state uh, but that will be contradictory because they have already said that they have not committed this crime so if you have not committed the crime then i how do you ask for pardon and uh, that will be contradictory so it may happen that they may have to make a confession if you have to make a pardon but that will be contradictory to the position that they have taken so far and therefore that is not an easy easy path so what could happen is a high level contact between government of india and the government of qatar and the uh, prime minister has visited qatar and uh, the emir has also been to india we have very good uh, relationship and in the context of that it may be possible that our prime minister make a direct appeal to the emir and uh, considering the situation and the sensitivity and uh, the need for continuing relationship and also there are about 8 lakhs of indians in qatar they all doing very well and uh, that could should not also be disturbed so considering all this that may be the solution for the prime minister to talk to them and seek his uh, help to get these people released uh, another option that india has is to go to the international court of justice uh, we did this in the case of uh, uh, mr yadav who was an indian national who was arrested in baluchistan and brought to pakistan and uh, sentenced to death uh, there of course uh, the case did not any sympathetic attention for the government of pakistan pakistan was determined to hang him and uh, they, they did not give consular access to our people and therefore that was also a complaint that we had that he was not well treated etc but in this case it's a friendly country like pakistan and therefore we do not expect this kind of treatment from them and therefore it will not be hopefully necessary for us to go to the icj of course icj can take any any decision uh, court of law has its own considerations and therefore we do not know how what the result will come but that option is there but i have a feeling that we will not opt for that because we would rather go let them go through the different levels of legislation the of legal uh, from legal uh, action and uh, get prove their innocence and then come back and the uh, second would be the option to uh, appeal to the emir directly by the prime minister so these are the kind of options uh, that are there uh, but the concern is that they are in jail the families are in touch with the government some of them were allowed to go to qatar also so that day they have been very very gracious and kind embassy itself had access to them and they know that they are well are being well treated and uh, so so normally uh, since the indian community has been so good 
But uh, in a situation where there are so many people in a society which is somewhat rigid on these matters, sometimes it happens. This has happened before also. Some some cases we succeed, uh, maybe odd, odd cases where do not we succeed also. Like in Yemen, because Yemen cannot be compared to Qatar because they are in a war situation. And a lady was sentenced to death. And till today, there is no solution, even though every effort has been made to solve that problem. But of course, in her case, she had confessed to the killing. And there's also a difference. And Yemen is in a different state of uh, sort of war, various factions uh, trying for leadership, etc. So it will not go to that that situation, we hope. Uh, but it's indeed a, an issue at this time, and uh, particularly because of the the conflict and uh, very many people who may not get much this this may not get much uh, traction or attraction for the leadership because there are much many more issues are uh, there in the war situation and India's position also has shifted slightly away from the Palestinians and this may also be a sensitive matter so on the whole this should not have happened we do not know how it happened. Uh, we do not know what misunderstanding took place. What they were doing was a very legitimate action because they were experienced uh, people in uh, submarines. And uh, maybe they were recruited with the uh, support and uh, advice of the government of India. It's possible. We don't know whether they went individually and got this job or whether there were any discussions between the government, two governments in taking them. So in that situation, if they were guilty of espionage for Israel, as they consider that slightly case, then it is complicated. But uh, India is doing everything possible to convey the feelings to the government of uh, Qatar and also keep the family comfortable and uh, assuring them that we will do everything, everything possible in order to get them released. So this is a situation, but I thought I would, it would be important for you to remember these remember these facts in case this happens to be an issue that might come up in your examination because it is a, an unusual situation and therefore it might be useful for you to have the, have the details. So hopefully they are not guilty and therefore they will probably be released and sent back to India very soon. Let us hope and pray that this happens. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? That's a legal legal issue. Because if you ask for pardon, you have to say that you committed a mistake or whatever. So at the moment, since they have said they have not done it, so it may be contradictory. That's what I mean. But I'm not a, I'm not a legal expert. I don't know how it will be treated. Uh, but uh, it may be uh, possible that uh, uh, such a, a pardon may not be relevant in a situation where they have uh, said that they are not they have not committed the crime. That is the complication. Yes, there have been there have been cases not identical and not with Qatar. Other the one that in Yemen I mentioned. There have been several cases of. Uh, that sentence being given to Indians in different circumstances. And in some countries, there is this uh, uh, way out is to pay blood money to the relatives. If a person is killed, uh, you can negotiate outside the court. You can engage yourself with the family and uh, fix an amount of money uh, that uh, may be paid to the family. And we cannot really compare the two situations. But when you have a large community like that, you know, once in a while such things uh, happen. Since, uh, you know, millions of Indians in the Gulf. And um, so often don't some of these things happen. But nothing has been very, 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 very serious. It's all been sold one way or the other. So the, uh, the answer is yes, we have had cases like this, but uh, it's all been sold. And there's not been any very serious matter. This, except for the Yemen case, I don't know any case where uh, the danger of a uh, death sentence still is there. These were submarine 
uh, work with the officers, naval officers of India, working on submarines in uh, Qatar as part of a company in Oman. And they were suddenly arrested last year for having passed on the secrets of his work to a third country, which is suspected to be Israel. And uh, proceedings went on for several months. And then suddenly, uh, we were told that uh, they were all found guilty and sentenced to death. And that became very serious. And uh, that will be very unfortunate if that happens. And we hope that will not happen. And one good thing is that in the last 20 years, Qatar has not uh, killed anybody. Many were uh, sentenced to death, even their own people. But they're all pardoned and uh, let off by the emir. So in the last 20 years, they have not uh, executed the death sentence. And that's also a very good uh, precedent. So hopefully the same thing will happen in their case also. But we have to go through the process. First is for them to appeal to the higher court. Second is for the government of India to appeal to them. Third would be for our government at the highest level to take it up. And fourth will be to go to the International Court of Justice. So by one way or the other, Hopefully, we'll be released. They will be released. We don't know. At least, I don't know. These people were working in that company, and whether there were others, we don't know. Maybe local people may have also been arrested. But we will not know that. They will not tell us. Since they are Indian nationals, we have been told about this. Anything else? Quite bad. Qatar is very strongly supportive of Palestine and, um, and Hamas, of course, um, was uh, supported some way or the other by Qatar. So that, that is why I mentioned earlier that um, within the GCC itself, there are questions about Qatar's uh, favoring Palestinian extremists. So the relationship with Israel can, quite, can be quite bad. That's a hypothetical question. We are hoping that this will not happen. And as I said, since they have not executed the death sentences in the last 20 years, they may not make an exception in this case. That's all. We don't know. And it's uh, the company is in Oman, and they were deputed there. So they might all be involved. They might all be trying to uh, get them released. These extradition proceedings that can be initiated by India applicable in this case. Extradition is, if there is a case locally, that has to be resolved first before they are extradited. So, and uh, there might be an extradition uh, agreement between India and Qatar. But that is a later process. If their internal legal processes are exhausted, then only we could try for extradition and say, that we will try them in India and uh, give them the appropriate punishment. So that may be a way, but that's a later process, not now. In fact, any national is, uh, is arrested anywhere in the world. They are, what they are, first thing they have to do is to inform the embassy concerned. But some people, they hold it back for some time until they really find out whether they're guilty or not. But in this particular case, they were very prompt in informing the embassy and also giving them access to go and see them and to see that they were not being tortured or they are not being badly treated. So the government of India is quite satisfied that they are well treated. And um, initially they were kept in, uh, in individual isolation from each other. But later they even put them all together so that they can talk to each other and discuss issues and so on. So it looks as though they have done it very appropriately and properly. So th this question as to whether uh, it is true that government has one particular position and uh, many people in India probably support, or some people at least support Hamas and Palestine more strongly. This is nothing unusual. Everybody does not approve of our relationship with the United States, for example. They have different views, or with Russia, or how we handle the Ukraine crisis. So 
This is a, ours is a free country, a democratic country. Everybody does not need to take the line of the government. And um, so it's possible that there are these different views. In the case of Palestine, this is becoming evident. Even on a communal basis, Muslim League has a different position. BJP has a different position and so on. So that we are seeing around us. But that is not relevant to this case as far as their freedom is concerned. So in that, we are all one. All of us would want them to be released and sent back to India. That is our purpose. On that, I don't think there is any difference of it. People may have a difference of opinion about India's position on Israel or India's lack of full support to, Israel, to Palestine. And uh, you know that many countries in uh, the Gulf are normalizing relations with Israel. And so some people think that Hamas did this because if they did not do this now, Palestine will disappear. There will be no need to support them. And a new world order will come and uh, the Palestinians will be neglected. So people say that was the reason for them to do it now. Because they thought so many things were happening. Many countries, including Saudi Arabia, is, um, uh, you know, discussing and thinking of a tripartite agreement of Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the U.S., which the Palestinians will consider very much against their interests. But this is another subject. We'll talk about Palestine and Israel in another class. So today we are focusing on Qatar, but these are relevant issues which you have to think about. How do I do that? Did any daily news available in their country, like many people were arrested regarding this issue in their country among them, or a few Indians like this? I'm not aware of any situation like that. But our concern is basically because they are Indian nationals. They may have different ways of dealing with their own people. But I have not heard of such a... See, odd cases we have heard about in the, in the Gulf. But eight people, and that two uh, former Indian naval officers, that's unprecedented. No, any human life is very precious. But ex-naval officers, I keep saying, because... They are responsible people. They normally would not do such things. So it is possible that they may help in their process. Israeli help, of course, is out of the question. This is not the time for that. We we have direct relations with Qatar. We have good relations with Qatar. So why should we go after anybody else? We can deal with them directly. Okay, with that, we can conclude. Thank you very much. Yeah.